Welcome to the third round of the Europa Truck Trial from Hungary. And this is Eurosport's continuing coverage of this year's Europa Truck Trial. For the first time in the history of truck trialing, a round on Hungarian soil. The East Europeans really taking to this sport in the last couple of years. Started out largely as a German pastime. But now the East Europeans and the Scandinavians getting more and more involved in it, not in terms of solely participating, but also in terms of holding the events on their own soil. They were in the Czech Republic earlier in last season and now here for the first time on Hungarian soil in the north of Hungary, near the River Danube, just outside the town of Estragon. 30,000 inhabitants, and that was where they were driving through in the early hours of the morning to get to the site. <laughs> Drivers all pulling their start numbers out of the hat as per normal, and then they have a good walk around the course to try and spot the obvious obstacles. And this event being held in a former coal mine, so they're not underground, no, it's an open cast colliery, and the workings have been disused for some while but now the vehicles using them to very good effect. And as you can see, not a great deal of need for too much in terms of man-made obstacles. The natural obstacles here are plenty tough enough. This is section 19, which won't mean a lot to you, but that's just uh, for a point of reference, out of a total of some 32 sections that they work their way through. So a little over halfway through the course. And 2-1-2, showing off his pace for us here in his Unimog, Rudolf Koenig. And alongside him was Annette Peschel. Harold Winkler. Heiko Glatzer alongside him in the Gas 66. These sort of vehicles not particularly familiar on British roads, or indeed off British roads but uh, very well known in Germany and uh, particularly in the eastern part of Europe. So uh, you can see from the fairly bluff architecture of the cab that uh, the design element is particularly strongly concerned with how long the truck will last doing what is expected to do rather than the aesthetics of it all. This split personality, 204, 214, is uh, Andrea Knetz and Udo Kessler, or they are Andrea Knetz and Udo Kessler, sharing driving at the moment. Andrea driving in this particular guise as 214. But Udo has a drive as well, and then they just swap the numbers around. Not exactly a driving test standard hill start, but she did a fair job at it anyway. As you can see, the natural inclines here, providing all the adrenaline that's needed to aid the concentration of the driver and her passenger. This is section three, one of the earliest parts of the course. And we're now in among the really big machines. This is last year's champion in this class. The class five in the standard class. Wim Kampschreuer and Jonas Bratt in one of the mighty Tatra 813s, this 8x8 machine. Some 16 tons of all-up weight and a long, steep drag up the hill there camera angle actually flattening it out to our view there. Something approaching a 45 degree slope. And as ever, big crowds being drawn by these off-road monsters. This is section 23. And grip is a real problem here, or keeping the drive going, as you can see. 409 being pulled out there by the crane. Peter Niedersgrass in his Ural. This is 408. Hermann Kreienberg 
in his Mercedes-Benz 6x6. Just a marker gone there. The course marked out by these wooden stakes in the ground. And he is going for the four wheels pulling rather than pushing approach here. Front wheel steering and adding drive as well. And you can see just how steep a slope it really is. If you look at the people on the edge of the picture and see how they're standing with one leg very uphill and one leg very much downhill of the other, you can ascertain just how tough it is. Good articulation on the back axle of Norbert Falker's number 407 Ural. And you can see why these workhorses of the steps are so well suited to this. But he's dug himself into trouble on the loose sandy soil and he is just digging a bigger and bigger hole. Well, Ronald Borman, one of the real experts of truck trialing, he's got a light Unimog, but he said the soil here is very, very sandy. You really have to keep your speed up, otherwise you just spin the wheels and they're like spades, you just dig holes. This is Ronald Borman. Shares the sports with his wife, Rita. And they have been truck trialing, I've probably said this now every programme this year, but it's such a statistic, it bears repeating. They've been truck trialing now for seven years. This is their eighth year of competition in the Europa Truck Trial Championship, so they were inaugural members of the club, if you like. And they have only once been beaten. That was the first round this year, and it caused a major upset, I can tell you. Jackie Rebo, the perennial bridesmaid, the Frenchman, managed to beat Ronald and Rita in the streaming wet conditions at the first round. And uh, Ronald struck back last time, hoping to do as well again this time out. But it does seem to be considerably more open class, class one now, now that Ronald Borman has actually been beaten. And for newcomers to the sport, the numbering system is very straightforward. The first digit tells you what class the vehicle is in. Classes one, two, three, four, and five are all standards, and beyond that they are into uh, prototypes, which means either heavily modified or absolute one-offs built by their owners. And then the second and third digit, the 05 in this case, tell you which position in last year's championship, indeed if any, they finished in. So this 105, fifth in last year's Class 1, as indeed it was. The Czech pairing, Yuri Speta and Vlasta Malikova. And again, like everybody in Class 1, using one of the Unimogs. This is a 404. Slightly more powerful 406s. Slightly heavier 406s, like Ronald Larita Borman and Jackie Rebo. More numerous and more frequently used. But doing a good job here on this stage. 105, dealing well with the sand. Well, here we are on zone 19. Three vehicles here in class three. This is the first of them, 301, last year's champions. And this very strange looking Gamma Goat, six wheel drive articulated vehicle. Frank Langenberg, the driver. There with the steering wheel knob to allow him to really wind on the lock. And sitting alongside him, Mikhail Flam and the Dutch-Austrian pairing. Not doing too badly overall, but really struggling, in fact, on this section. Section 19, they scored only 190 points. On both their rivals. Jochen Bertler and Jaroslav Dana scoring 480 points, so tying for the lead on that particular stage. Goodness me, just look at the diesel smoke coming out of that. And here is one of those aforementioned rivals. This is Jochen Bertler. This is Iveco Euro Truck, 4x4. And this using all the power is has the most powerful engine in the competition the 303 so now into the prototype class and that's just a sort of handy catch-all description as you can see this is clearly not a jeep nor is it ever 
recognisable anymore as a Unimog. 6.04 here on section 7. And uh, scored very well indeed on this section. Only one rival in class 6 at the, on this particular event. And that was Wolfgang Bulles, who we'll see in a moment. 6.04 here is Horst Bledau. And his co-driver, Silvio Mentz. They don't even have a name for this. Some of the specials have their own names. This one doesn't. It's just what it is. Rather fetchingly painted in its Tiger livery. And despite all these stalls, they're not losing points or having problems because of that. Still scoring very well, avoiding these markers. The co-driver consistently restarting it for his driver there. Every time she manages to stall it. Good to see <laughs> It is a test of nerve quite frequently when the tilt angles really become excessive. Just imagine the co-driver there. Look, he's sitting there at one stage close to 60 degrees away from vertical. And it was all going to roll down on his side as well. I should think he kept his arm well inside. 6.01 here is Wolfgang Bullers. The, the Bullers trial mog. Once mm, uh, essentially the running gear of a Unimog and uh, some sheet aluminium, as you can see, but very successful for all its agricultural looks. I do wish, though, it, and I'm uh, sorry again, I said this last time out, I do wish he would tighten that loose fan belt. I know it looks like something from Mad Max, but it doesn't have to have a squeaky fan belt as well. The, uh, and there it goes, right on cue. A rear-mounted engine with what appeared to be a uh, water drinking bottle as the radiator catch tank. Still, we will pass right on there. As you can see, the substantial rollover architecture means that at least it's safe, even if it doesn't sound very pretty. You may wonder why some of these vehicles are being shown in areas that you don't see others participating in. It's not just a whim of the picture editor. In fact, depending on the size and the class and the power and the weight and so on of the vehicles, they undertake various different parts or indeed various different stages. Of the 30 that uh, have been marked out by the organizers, on average, most of the classes will probably undertake no more than 10 or so. But the specials, like these, some 12 or 14 stages, depending on the particular class, have been earmarked for them to have a go at. But clearly, some of the massive six- and eight-wheel drive vehicles would have no chance whatsoever of working their way around such tight topography as is here, being... Uh, almost successfully negotiated by the smaller machines. So various different challenges are chosen, hopefully to suit the classes, to suit the size and the overhangs, the clearance, the weight and so on of the various different vehicles. In fact, the prototype classes, six, seven and eight, only four vehicles represented in those. all undertaking 13 stages, as did the bigger class four and five standard trucks, the really big monsters, but they were very different stages that uh, they took part in. Some of them they did have in common. This one, not one of them, I'm afraid. Not this particular part, at least, of uh, stage seven. And occasionally, when you do get a close-up of one of the marker canes, you'll see that not all of them are just plain wood. Quite a number of them have different colour taped bands around the top. And each class follows a course through marker canes with its coloured tape on. And that's why it's so important for the drivers and their co-drivers to have had a good shifty at the course beforehand. 
very, very obvious benefits of the four-wheel steer there on the Buller's trial mog being shown on that uh, last section. And the very, very obviously different look here of number 801. One of my personal favourites, this. It is uh, a unique vehicle in this truck trialling. Helmut and Reinhard Rauber, two German brothers, own it and generally take turns in driving it. Although for reasons that uh, I'm afraid aren't explained, in Hungary only Helmut was out in it. It was only ever seen as 801. So uh, Reinhard otherwise occupied, incapacitated or whatever for the weekend. Perhaps he's out playing football with the pub team, who can tell? Anyway, 801 it is then. Helmut Rauber in the Timberjack. That's what this is. And uh, as you can probably guess from the name, it's a forestry equipment. It is forestry equipment. It is a piece of forestry equipment. And bundled together in the same... Uh, or with the same courses as the Timberjack is this machine, the only representative here of Class 7. Josef Einger and Fritz Hulob in the Ural. And again, the articulation on the rear axle being used very successfully to help grab the vehicle around obstacles. And the Austrians are very comfortable with this vehicle. They've been using it for a number of years now. And with a great deal of success. Runners up in their category last year, but in fact the only vehicle that's been seen out regularly in Class 7 this year. And certainly the only ones out in Hungary. So they're on section five, the same section that we saw the Timberjack on. And uh, in fact, neither Auringer nor Rauber managed a clean sheet on any stage during the course of the day, which says something certainly about uh, the tough courses, very, very few zero scores coming out of the event, very few indeed. And that's really what the crew's like. I think if everybody cleans the stage, then they all generally agree that it can't really have been worth doing anyway. If nobody cleans it, then they think that was a good stage. So, with uh, the recent severe flooding in Eastern Europe in mind, a particularly apposite stage, I guess, if uh, you'd like to say it that way. One of the big areas of standing water there being very successfully negotiated on section 27. Now that's something that we've not seen in truck trialing before. But uh, the way the crews and certainly the spectators enjoyed it, I shouldn't be surprised if we see a few more working their way into courses. If not this year, then certainly next year. And if they do come back to Hungary, as I'm sure the spectators and the locals would like, then we may see a little more of that as well being thrown in. 402, who were fording through the water, incidentally, in their Steyr, Helmut Kröpfel and Hermann Ancini from Austria. Kröpfel clearly a Swiss-Deutsch, German speaker, and Hermann Ancini, well, from his uh, surname, you'd have to guess that originally came from the Italian uh, quarters of Austria. And not much in the way of steering lock here to help their rivals having a second bite at the cherry to get round three up in this uh, Ural normally Peter Niedigersass 
Thomas Steckling and Gregor Haas. And in fact, Gregor Haas not here in Hungary, just Niedigesas and Steckling aboard. Oh dear, digging themselves a hole on the exit, going back and having a second go. Finally find their way out. Well, that and other problems serve to drop them behind the number two machine after that, which was in fact the penultimate section for the class four machines. Well, let's take a look at a little bit more of the action. Section 13 and a chance to look at the Class 3 vehicles. This is 303, Jochen Bertler and Pierre Ley, the Iveco Euro track we saw earlier. And for those of you with a degree in uh, modern physics, producing a thundering 309 kilowatts. No, I've got no idea what it is in old money either, I'm afraid, but. Uh, it is significantly the most powerful vehicle out there. 305 here, Yuroslav Dana and Peter Zelenka, two regulars in this championship. Came into the series last year and competed in all this year's rounds so far. And the Czechs in their Tatra. So they have, saw them having their share of problems on the music clip. But uh, still going. and not doing too well on this section in fact you see they've set a couple of markers already they racked up 20 points for themselves here putting them uh, in second place at that stage behind uh, 303 Jochen Bertelet this is the only all Hungarian crew in 120. 
And they're in a Unimog 406 as well. Isvan Sermik and Laurent Lacco. And there you can see just to the left of the vehicle several different strips of tape. <laughs> you don't actually get really a very good view of them at any more than a couple of feet away, but as you can see, the co-driver is very close indeed. And those are really for guidance when they are marking out the course before they undertake it in the vehicles. And the Hungarians here, clearly with a lot of local support, obviously. That's something the other crews didn't enjoy, but uh, everybody seeming to enjoy their sports, whether it was the local crews or not. And this is the Unimog 406, just like the last vehicle this time. Jackie Rebo and Bernard Roussel, the two firemen. No, they haven't nicked it from the station either. But uh, instead of your more traditional motor racing or motorcycling style crash helmets, they're wearing their traditional French fireman's helmets. Not wildly sure they're FIA approved, but then uh, I don't think that bothers the people in truck driving particularly anyway. Got a feeling that people would have fits if they were being used in uh, single-seater racing or saloon car racing, but uh, in the truck trial world, they're quite happy that if they're good enough to protect firemen in blazing buildings with collapsing roofs, then they're probably good enough for the truck trials. Just noticing on the uh, front of the truck there, on uh, 103, the uh, internet address of the Europa Truck Trial site, www.grade, or grada in fact it is, but spelt grade as in Lou Grade, G-R-A-D-E dot D-E, forward slash truck trial. So if you are inspired to find out more, I'm afraid your German may need to be up to scratch. Oops. But uh, that is where you will find information on the Europa Truck Trial Championship. Well then, it's all gone quiet over there, as we say in these moments. And the Belgians, Stefan Ertz and Marian Glavus, bail out. Stefan Ertz doing the gentlemanly thing and at least rolling it on his side. And the uh, cranes that are always strategic, new teeth, I'm sorry, trying to wear them in, strategically placed, doing their job and winching them out of the way. 203, Pavel Kaczak and Yuroslav Fizer from the Czech Republic. And they're in a Praha, UV80. Four by four, quite a flyweight even in this category, four and a half tons all that weight. Yes, I know it would hurt on your foot, but it's still light. Incidentally, talking um, a moment or two ago about Jackie Rebo, the French fireman. Oh dear, and they're going over as well. And the fire extinguisher very thoughtfully smashing its way in through the back window. I'm not entirely sure that, that was the way it was designed to work. Jackie Rebo with a new partner first time out here, Bernard Rousseau. Clearly he's bringing other boys off the shift with him at each of the events. This is uh, 219, which is rather confusing because uh, it's another of the gases, but this time in a much more military color scheme, the sort of thing you probably expect to see this truck in. And I would imagine that the barrel straps at the back are probably full of water for ballast rather than anything else. This is clearly uh, a uh, hard working vehicle as well. Thomas Stuberauch and Holger Reichel from Germany. And I wonder whether the, the uh, drab olive green colour scheme came on the vehicle originally, or whether they just thought it was a suitable and cheap and easy colour to reapply. Kitbox is certainly sounding as if it's seen a few hundred thousand kilometres, isn't it? And oh dear, over they go as well. 
So again, the angle of the dangle proving just a little too much for them. Bailing out. Now, see, if they fitted a, a gun ring and turret to the top, or at least a gun ring and a trapdoor to the top of the cab, they could have just bailed out the side. And there are uh, a couple of those, not gun rings, but uh, traps at least, on the top of the cab of these Tatras. And you can, oh, just they're fantastic things, and this is exactly what they should be doing, ploughing through uncharted wilderness. All right, I know everybody's watching there are film crews there and so on, but uh, they really look the part, don't they? Never mind your little Unimogs, four and a half, five and a half ton of weight. Never mind all that. What you need is a proper truck. I'm sorry, I'm waxing your logic again, and it's clearly sinking up to his axles in the mud as well. Mike Kirsch, Rennie Steinbach, and Silvio Schneller have all bailed out. And uh, this is probably the least enviable job, isn't it? Wading in through the filthy, muddy water with the cable. But the Tatra, with a bit of assistance, comes back out. And in fact, they were the only ones to attempt it. None of the other big Tatras decided they would go the whole hog and go all the way through. Taking the driest route round, Jan Steindicke and Cornelia Schumann in their 813. This is them, number 512. Here, the brakes just gradually being released, fraction by fraction here by Vladimir Ostrakovsky. This is a Ross Visa, Ostrakovsky from the Czech Republic, as is his uh, co-pilot Jan Borda. So, knowing no better, I'm afraid I have to assume, rather than inform you, that a, a Ross Visa is a Czech truck, at the very least an East European truck, I would have to say. And they've got the bailing out hatch open. Just have to hope they don't invert it, mind you. I would think they're probably getting quite wet enough inside at the moment. <laughs> Jan's got his feet up on the dashboard. Doesn't seem to be leaking too much out of the door, but then I suppose he hasn't opened it yet. Successfully navigated that bit. How will they work on the what is now fairly slushy sandy slope. Seem to be managing without too many problems. 2-1-2 two, two here. Looking to work his way up towards the front of the class two, the biggest class in terms of uh, competitors at least, this time out. Rudolf Koenig and Annette Peschel. And this is their Unimog. Doing a good job here, aren't they? Dealing with it quite happily. And this, in fact, was the final section for the Class 2 trucks. And they scored joint lowest marks, joint highest position. Only 12 points lost on the entire section. So a really good job by them. And that helped pull them up the order at the end here. 207 stroke 214. And uh, rather confusingly numbered. Rather confusingly just about... Oh, dear. Yes, that all went fucked very quickly, didn't it? <laughs> Which is probably just what they're saying inside the cab at the moment. And here comes the least envied man on the site. <laughs> Poor bloke. 207 is Helga Kuhl and Jan Holger Frank. And when it's got the number 204, and as we saw earlier, Andrea Knetz and Udo Kessler are the crew aboard it. They're both using the same vehicle. And rather than just swapping between one pair, there are two pairs using it who swap between themselves from event to event. So all four of them in the truck 
on each of the stages at each event, but it depends, I guess, who wins the toss as to who drives what and when and where. Enrico Knobloch, this is our first sighting of him in the 502, and Dirk Voss in their Tatra 813. And their vehicle identical to the other red truck we saw in the water, Jan Standiker and Cornelia Schumann. And they're making short work of this slope. This is section three. As they scoring very nicely indeed on this hill. No problems at all with that slope for the big 8x8 Tatras. Two oh eight. These are German brothers Dirk and Gerald Baum in their IFA, IFA, IFA. And they are on section 23, about midway through the stages for the class two trucks. And uh, everybody in this class is scoring pretty highly. They racked up 128 points for themselves, which puts them in joint uh, sixth or seventh on that stage in the category. Best score was uh, championship winner last year. 201 Reinhard Leopold who only scored uh, 60 points and here he is the Hussar that's the truck not him incidentally sixty points on that stage incidentally the long drag up the hill that we just saw uh, 502 the big Tatra uh, making Enrico Knobloch that was the only stage that anybody cleared and all the class five trucks and one of the class six runners cleared that uh, entirely so they uh, an entire class made their way successfully through the stage without uh, any points in fact um, in 601 wolfgang bullers in his trial mog cleared not only that but four other stages as well, which is a resounding number uh, of uh, successes for one event. But he was the only man in the entire field to clear more than one single stage, which is uh, quite some feat by the organizers. Gerhard Muller and Iris Rebecca Orban, the first time we've seen them in number 206, their IFA. And they are battling at the top of their class. 201, Wolfgang Bullers not only, uh, sorry, Reinhard <laughs> Leopold, not only last year's champion, but in fact twice the champion in this category, and a very, very uh, tough opponent, but in fact he was beaten here by this man, Peter Schleier and his co driver Wolfgang Stark. The Iveco winning the Class 2 category. They had a total of 1,281 points and Reinhard Leopold 1,463 and in fact Leopold was only just in second place because Pavel Kaczak, the Czech in his Praha, came as close to victory as he ever has done in third place to 1,463 of Leopold. He had 1,488. He was very close at the top of the Class 2 section because right behind him on 1,492 was the number 215 of Harold Winkler and his gas. So very tough stuff in that class. The biggest in terms of entries and certainly the toughest in terms of competition as well.
Here we are then with 404, 408, which finished uh, in reverse order. In fact, 408, 404, third and fourth in the class four category. In the hands of uh, Rudy Matten and Enver Sen as 404, and Hermann Kreienberg and Roland Nordenbruch as 408, just outscoring them. And running into trouble here. Two on eight here in section seven. And in fact, for the category two machines, this was the first section of the day, and they got through with the minimum score or the lowest score, 96 points lost. Three others behind them on 98. And the most disastrous run with a score of 398 was from their colleagues in number 212. 212, Rudolf Koenig and Annette Peschel from Germany. We saw them in uh, trouble earlier. I figure it may well have been on this stage, in fact. But uh, here, 218, Uwe Weber and Gunther Law in their gas 66. see some of these trucks struggling with the big hill this is the one the Tatras had no problem with at all with their eight-wheel drive and maybe massively heavy but they are massively powerful and a few of them really struggling here Doing a very good job though, 601. Wolfgang Bullis in his Bullis trial mod, just giving it a good bounce there himself and his crew to uh, keep it going all the way up. Job well done. And finally, look at uh, Enrico Noblock in 502, second in his category. but taking the best, second best score, in fact, actually away from this particular section, section seven. Yeah. Enrico, second in the championship at the moment to last year's winner. In 501, Wim Kampschroyer in the Tatra. And Enrico and his co-driver Dirk Voss determined to try and whittle away the advantage to the Dutch pairing. Had a win apiece. Kampschroyer winning the first round. And Noblock winning the second round. Kampschroyer taking victory this time out as well. Enrico saying, well, everything's gone pretty well here in Hungary. The section's pretty tough, though, with all the uh, sand hidden under the grass uh, making traction a real problem. But uh, I'm pretty happy. I'm second here, second in the championship still. And uh, there's still an awful lot to go. So I hope my luck holds out and we can uh, take the battle to the end of the season. Well, the result then in the S1 class, Ronald and Rita Borman winning again, continuing on their winning ways. 4.4 there from the Russian judge for Peter Schleier and Wolfgang Stark. Stark, is the co-driver, formerly a prototype driver himself. Jochen Bertler winning the class three. And taking victory here in class four again, Helmut Kruppel and Hermann Ancini. Rather sheepish looking Wim Kampstroyer and Harold Alders from the Netherlands, beating Noblock and Voss for the second time this season. And in the prototypes, the Bullets trial mog triumphing again. And in lumped together class, Josef Aringer and his co-driver Fritz Hulob 
beating the Timberjack this time out. So Jackie Rebo leading the Class 1 Championship. Quite a surprising turn of events. Leading the series overall. This is Gerhard Mutter, the uh, organizer, saying that he saw a four-wheel drive competition in Germany and thought that this would be the perfect place to organize a truck trial, and that's why we came here. But we had an awful lot of problems with the organization here, most particularly trying to get everybody through the Hungarian customs. A lot of them waited there for a long while, many hours, and he said uh, some of them only arrived just a few minutes before the start. Well, that's a shame because it was obviously a marvellous venue and well received by the locals and competitors alike. If they can sort out their border control problems next season, then you never know, they may well be back for more competition here in Hungary. Well, that's it for this time out on the Europa Truck Trial at the end of round three of the series. That's the midway point, three rounds of the championship still to go and you'll catch up with all of those here on Eurosport in the weeks to come. Until the next time out, it's Martin Haven wishing you a very goodbye.